Now it's time for some checks and balances, freelance police style. Max, will you do the honors? Gladly. Look it, fellas. My fingertips look like little tadpoles. <laughs> they just don't make these guys like they used to. That's no guy, Max. It's a damned ugly puppet. Ah, oh, the yeah. drawstring in his back should have been our first clue. Our first clue should have been the swirly eyes. But, silly me, I thought hypnotize E, not hypnotize her. What? Yes, an ingenious device being used to hypnotize the TV-watching public. But who was controlling him? So dastardly. Oh, to get that smell out of the interrogation room. What? What have you done? He was like that when we got here. Sam did it! <laughs> so these two numbskulls managed to off the president. It was a deep tissue massage gone horribly wrong. Ninjas! Sam did it! Still... Ratings from the last State of the Union address were even lower than reruns of Midtown Cowboys. I didn't expect to have to replace the president so soon. Now that these idiots have forced my hand... Uh, we're standing right here. We can hear everything you're saying! <laughs> it's time for a leader that people will have to listen to. Agents Jackson, Burr, and Degambe, we are moving the timeline forward. Commence phase two of the operation. I'll prepare the new candidate. Uh-oh. Quite the reaction I would have expected from a Secret Service agent discovering two people over the decapitated body of the president. What do you think this fake body is made of? Can I keep it? No time for that now, Max. We've got to stop the... Wait, what's that noise? a scuba diving Buddha on a banana boat with cocktail onions and a map to the stars' homes. Yeah! They've reanimated America's most beloved president. I always thought Taft was shorter. Not Taft, you deficient. My fellow Americans, I am Abraham Lincoln. As you know by now, your president was recently murdered by two mysterious interpreters. But turn not to fear and despair. I have returned to guide us through this troubled time. A vote for me is a vote for Abraham Lincoln. I'll get it! What's that? Uh-huh. Lincoln Memorial. Right. Hydraulic motors and robotic implants. Yes. Okay. I see. We're on it. Wrong number? That was the commissioner, Max. If this new Mecha Lincoln wins the emergency election, the nefarious forces controlling him will have unchecked power to destroy the entire free world. I hate when they do that. Me too. That's why one of us is going to have to run against him. You got to answer the phone! Okay, fair's fair. Max, we're going to make you the next president of the United States. Yay! So... We're gonna make him the next president of the United States. How are we gonna do that? Hey look, it's the president's head. It's the severed head of the president. I yearn to hold it aloft and turn giant sea atrocities to stone. You're thinking of Medusa's head. Oh yeah, I always get those two heads confused. Hey look, the flyer. It's Lincoln's campaign flyer. I want you. Honest, dedicated, over a century of experience. Abraham Lincoln is your man. Q it's cards. the cue cards for Lincoln's speech. I'm glad that I've been given one more life to give for my country. Channel 30. Hi, America! It's me, Max! Remember, a vote for me is a vote for prosperity, alacrity, and the tyranny of my furry white iron fist. Thank you. Oh, 
Oh, Super Ball's not blocking the war room. I can't get in there. Is that a potted plant or the Vice President of the United States? It is hard to tell the difference. I think we're done in here. That ribbon is classified, sir. Presidents only. Huh. The Liberty Bell is a light for this room, just as America is a light for... Yes! Metaphor is such an ugly quality of furniture. Let's see, we need to find some incriminating evidence. And to do this, we need to listen in on somebody's conversation. So, Mr. Bug, we need you once again. Mr. Lincoln, would you like to say a few words to the audience? <clears throat> Thank you. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Today is the day we return America to greatness. I stand here at the steps of the White House, not above the people, but with the people. Only one man can lead the nation through this troubled time. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. The time to act is now. Thank you. I've heard better addresses from the 411 operator. <laughs> what did you just say? Hey, Lincoln! Captain Ahab called! He wants his beard back! I'm gonna slap you silly, you little punk. Save it for the debate, Max. Yay, we got on the talking to listening to ice. That'll come in handy later. Look at the cards again. Two wrongs don't make a right. Huh. Mr. Lincoln, as a candidate for office, my pal Max would like to engage in a thoughtful discussion of the key issues. Followed by a round of spiteful mudslinging. Hmm, I see. Well, this is a bit irregular. As you're well aware, I'm the most beloved president in history. So I just assumed I'd be running unopposed. Wrong. Oh no, you didn't! You ain't all that! I freed the slave. I was star of a popular television sitcom. I'm on the penny. I was on TV. Now, gentlemen, we can resolve this like adults through moderate reasoned debate. Very well, then. In the spirit of democracy, I say, bring, bring it. it. <laughs> and it's a beautiful day on the White House lawn as we bring you the first in a series of debates for this emergency election for U.S. president. In the Republican corner, we have the giant animated statue of Abraham Lincoln. And representing the Random Violence and Destruction Party, there is the hyperkinetic, rabbit-like creature known as Max. Acting as completely impartial moderator for the debates will be Sam. The candidates are ready, so let's listen in. Let's see. Um... Let's talk about the issues. Contestants, it's time for our lightning round. Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to name some of the tough issues facing our country today. I'd like you to sum up your stand on those issues in a few concise words. Well, all right. I'm afraid this will have to be completely off the top of my head, as I have nothing prepared. Where do you stand on religion and the schools? Where do you stand on religion and schools? Two wrongs don't make a right. Did we hear that right? Lincoln just came down against both religion and education. Wow, that's gotta hurt him in the polls. <laughs> hmm.
I knew it. Yay! We can mess with Free the card. Delivery. All right, let's keep going. It's time for another in this ongoing series of debates between Abraham Lincoln and Max. We turn you over to our impartial moderator, Sam. Let's talk about the issues. Mr. Lincoln, I'd like you to tell the voters your stand on some of the tough issues. Very well. How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? How do you plan to solve the problem of toxic waste? Free home delivery. Ooh, an effective but very controversial proposal from candidate Lincoln. And the crowd did not like that idea one bit. Let's see how it affected the polls. <laughs> okay. Try this. This is Give gonna me be all fun. you got. All right, here we go. Let's see. Let's talk about the issues. How do, would you describe your tax plan? Oh God, yes, I was right. How would you describe your tax plan? Give me all you got. And candidate Lincoln has proposed one shocker of an economic strategy, which even Democrats are calling a trifle excessive. That had to have hurt him in the polls. All right, so Lincoln's almost, he's still winning. <sighs> Let's see. I don't see what else we can do. Let's go see Sybil. Or Bosco, either one. Where are we going, Sam? We're going back to the office, little Back buddy. to the office. Shotgun! Okay. okay. Memory served me right. We go to Sybil and says she's not doing a dating service. She'll ask me something about getting a date. Hello, Sybil. Hey, Sybil. What's new in the world of frequent random career reassessment? Hi, fellas. I'm really excited. I found the perfect job for me. You don't say. That's right. I, Sybil Pandemic, am now a professional matchmaker. I thought I smelled phosphorus. I thought I smelled that joke coming down the turnpike, <laughs> burning oil and dragging its muffler. It's a dating service, Max. I figured that if a smart, successful career woman like me could be having so much trouble finding a date, there must be plenty of other people who could use help. Hmm. So she can't get a date, huh? You're having trouble finding your soulmate? You don't know the half of it. It seems like all the guys I meet are total losers. No offense. None taken. Hey! Or else they're borderline <laughs> psychopaths. No offense. None taken! It's the borderline cases you have to watch out for. Let's see. What kind of men are you looking for? What kind of men are you looking for? Older men. Guys with a little history to them are such a turn on. Oh, and tall men. And distinguished. And he should be experienced. All right, enough already. Yes, I will go out with you, Sybil. I thought she was talking about me. Hmm. <laughs> Could you find us dates for us? Could you find dates for Max and me? Seriously? I mean, sure. Why not? Stranger things have happened, I guess. They must have. Somewhere. I'm choosing not to be offended by that. What do we need to do? It's easy. Just submit an application. We want to submit an application. What kind of stuff is on this application? The usual. Your best traits? And what kind of person you're looking for? Hooks for hands! Hooks for hands! <laughs> when you're done, I'll put the application into my computer, which analyzes your personality matrix at 15 essential compatibility points. 
I don't have a personality matrix so much as a personality vector. Once we've found a match, you call your date and agree on a time and place. Let me help you guys out. Tell me your good points and what you're looking for in a date. Uh, she should love animals. She should love animals. Such as the elusive praying mantis, whose deadly but enthralling mating rituals she mimics. You really know how to ruin the mood, Max. Oh, and cybernetic implants, like an elbow that can connect to the internet. <laughs> um, she should be tall. She should be tall. At least 12 feet, or 4 meters if she's Canadian. Um, very spiritual. I'm very spiritual. A disciple of the Ancient Ones, enacting dark magic rituals to bring forth their reign again upon this earth. Rise, Shigarath! Rise, Abyag Solemn! Mm. Air of mystery. She should have an air of mystery. Making frequent passing mention to her time on the chain gang, but when pressed, revealing nothing. She should love the outdoors. She should love the outdoors. We frequently lock ourselves out of the office. And lead an active lifestyle. I lead an active lifestyle. Always running from the authorities. Okay, that's good. That's all I can think of. Oh, that's plenty. Now I'll just put your applications into the computer. And there it is. Max, it says your perfect match is... Cybernetic laser eyes. Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. Well, that's interesting. It says your perfect match is Sam. Disturbing, and yet somehow not completely unexpected. And Sam, your ideal soulmate is... Wait for it, Max. Well, there goes another blow to the concept of a fair and just universe. Hey, Sam, what do you say we never ever speak of this again? Way ahead of you, little buddy. Cool. See you around, Sybil. What's this? A new application? Yeah, it's uh, for a friend of ours. Let's see. Not THE Abraham Lincoln. He's tall, distinguished, loves the theater. <laughs> he sounds perfect. That chump doesn't have half my cute, fluffy market ability. Do you think fluffy. your computer can find him a date? Computer? Nothing. This guy sounds perfect for me. Oh, but he didn't leave his phone number. Next time you see him, give him my number. I'd love to meet him. Oh, dokey. Sweet. Okay, so now we're gonna hook... We're gonna hook Sybil Pandemic up with Abraham Lincoln. Juicy scandal. I hear it. I hear it in the wind. I hear it. Let's see. Let's go. Actually, let's pretend to... Oh! Yes, that's right. I, I did that. Um, I can use the uh, the voice thingy I did the, with, the, with the talking. I can pretend to be Abe and set up the date. That's going to be great. Whee! Whee! Who are you calling, Sam? Sybil. Sybil. I am Abraham Lincoln. I, Abraham Lincoln, am that man. Oh, well, Mr. President, it's just, it's just such an honor to talk to you. I saw your application, and I was wondering, would you like to go out sometime? Mm. This date, oh. This is a date that will be remembered for centuries to come. Oh my, you are a charmer, aren't you? Well then, Mr. Rail Splitter, where would you like to meet? <laughs> I stand here at the steps of the White House. At the White House. Got it. What time should I meet you? Uh, let's see. Now! The time to act is now. Oh, I love that decisiveness. I'll rush right over. 
I'm going to slap you, silly, you little punk. What? I didn't catch that last part. I will feast on your entrails and devour <laughs> your soul. What? Abe? What's going on? Uh, see you soon. Gotta go.